Hi everyone, this is the setup process for the uh, SEC Body Temp Cam 1 uh, with the latest firmware version. Uh, so if you have the build date of 2020-06-11, this is for you. Keep in mind, if you are upgrading, uh, you will need to default your unit and, and go through the setup process again. So this is also going to be helpful to you as well as some of the menu options have changed and such. Okay, now um, also keep in mind if you are a new setup that does not pertain to you, the firmware upgrade, uh, you know, if you have, if you just received the unit, you're going to have the latest version of this firmware. So, you know, regarding firmware upgrades, that has no, uh, no meaning to you. So you should be uh, fine. Okay. Um, this is just for anybody that had the unit prior and recently upgraded to the latest firmware. Okay, keep in mind you want a default unit that's done in the maintenance menu and you click on the default button. That is very highly recommended after you do an upgrade, okay? After you upgrade that firmware, okay? So you'll have to go through the setup process again. After you default the unit, when you get to the login, uh, right before you get to the login screen, it is recommended as well. It's all, not recommended, it's necessary. You need to go to the gear icon here in the top right, click on internet options and delete your cookies, okay? so click delete and then check the box for cookies. You don't need all this stuff deleted, just cookies, okay? Delete all that stuff, um, then open up the login screen, okay? That is just for new firmware users, people that are upgrading from the previous firmware to now, okay? That being said, we'll continue now with the setup process, okay? So if you're just getting uh, to the login screen, okay, you'll put in your IP address. Um, keep in mind, we have a tools program here available on our website. Um, if you don't know what your IP address is, uh, you can use the IP tool program that's available on our website. Um, if you connect, because by default, the camera is on DHCP. Okay, so you'll plug it in. If you're plugging the camera into your network, then uh, it is going to take an IP address. You can use our tool to search. Just hit that magnifying glass that's in the middle of the tool and, and, and begin to search and it'll tell you what the IP address is of the camera, okay? First things first, very highly recommended that you, for the setup process, you use Internet Explorer, okay? Blue E, yellow ring around it. Um, if you're on a Windows 10 PC, a lot of times Internet Explorer is hidden. Hit this magnifying glass in the bottom left, type in the word Internet, and click on the browser, okay? Very highly recommended that you use this. You get full range of options and settings to set, set the camera up, okay? so. Viewing purposes, you can view it in the in, in Chrome and, and Firefox, whatever whatever you use. However, for uh, the setup process, highly re highly recommended Internet Explorer. Okay, so we'll begin. So for starters, you're gonna log in. Your username is admin. Your password is one two three four five six seven u. Keep in mind if you defaulted the unit, that password gets reset to the default as well. So one two three four five six seven u will pertain to you guys as well. So go ahead and log in. I already changed the password. So, but if you're logging in for the first time, you're gonna get a prompt there that's gonna pop up on the screen right away, asking you to change your password to something more secure. So go ahead and do that. Okay, after changing your password, it's going to pop up here and say, have you download the plugin. You're not gonna use VLC to play, you're gonna download the plugin. Okay, this is just for viewing purposes, so that way you can see your camera feed. I already have a plugin installed, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. And this is what you'll see. You're gonna see the camera feed, okay? So, seeing you see the camera feed, the first thing that we'll do is we're gonna set it up. So go ahead and click on configuration. From configuration on the left-hand side, you're gonna see something that says temperature measurement. So go ahead and click on that. First thing that we're going to set up is the thermal calibration, okay? Now this entire process is getting the camera set up. It's getting the calibration set properly so that way you're scanning faces properly. That way, you know, any little thing that needs to be done gets done, okay? Um, so that's what we'll do first is we're gonna set up the calibrator. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna mark it. So if you're just turning on the camera for the first time, sorry, I had something in here. So um, this is what you'll see, okay? So this is your calibrator. Now remember the calibrator, nine to 16 feet away from the camera, okay? Is, is, that's the recommendation. Minimum of nine feet away from the, from the camera. So you know, your camera, and then the calibrator. So nine feet away from the camera to 16 feet maximum, 
okay? So that's the recommendation. First thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a box around your calibrator. So you just do that by grabbing on the screen with the mouse and drawing a box. Now, you don't want this box big, okay? You want it very small like so, right over the faceplate of the camera, of the calibrator, okay? So you put that over the faceplate of the cal calibrator. Now keep in mind also, your calibrator has to be visible by your thermal lens. This is the thermal lens, okay? You'll notice that it, you know, it shows heat signatures. It needs to be visible by this lens, okay? After drawing your box around it, you're going to go ahead and enable your calibration. You're also going to display area info, turn that on. Uh, your target temperature, okay? You're gonna go ahead and leave that at 104 because you'll notice if you turn on the calibrator, right? On the back of the calibrator, it's, it's, it's temperature reading is in Celsius. It's 40 degrees Celsius. That is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what we're referencing. It's just the temperature that the calibrator is, okay? And 104 is the target, okay? So you leave that number. That has got nothing to do with your high temperature readings, nothing, okay? So that should be 104. <clears throat> uh, emission rate should be left at 0.98, okay? This distance here is your distance from camera to calibrator, okay? How many feet is it from your camera to your calibrator? Um, by default, it's, it's left here at 16 feet. Um, 16 feet is the maximum. Our camera to our calibrator is 16 feet, but whatever your distance is from nine to 16, this is what you, where you would put that number in, okay? After you do all these things, make very important, make sure you hit apply, otherwise it will not save. Now look what happens as soon as I hit apply. See how you get in the cross in the middle? It's detecting my calibrator, okay? And it's reading a temperature reading. Uh, the, the temperature reading is the temperature of the calibrator, which is 104 degrees. Okay, so it's reading that it's holding temperature. That's good. If something was wrong with the calibrator or the temperature was not holding, you would see something like this. It would be blinking red, the box around the calibrator. Um, this can mean a few things. You, your box may not be around the calibrator, as, as ours is not now, and it can't detect it. What it's saying is it can't detect the calibrator. So this can mean a few things. It could be a problem with your calibrator. Your calibrator could be too far away. Your calibrator could be too close. There could be an air vent above your calibrator. Your calibrator could be outside. Your calibrator could be a by and outside door, airflow. The calibrator is supposed to be at least 10 feet away from airflow. Keep that in mind, very important. It needs to be at least 10 feet away from airflow. Otherwise you can see something like this where the calibration is dropping temperature, okay? Airflow is the biggest issue with the calibrator if, if it's detecting airflow, okay? So if you ever make a mistake, you can always hit the clear button. It'll clear off any kind of mistake that you might've made on the screen here, all right? That being said, once that is all set, we will go ahead and move on to the next step. The next step um, would be to set your focus area. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna click on thermal mapping. Now, thermal mapping, um, this is used for a few different things, but for what we're doing right now, I'm just talking about zooming in and zooming out, okay? You'll see you have some buttons right here. This is your zoom in, zoom out button, all right? This, this lens here, the thermal lens, this is your thermal lens that shows you the heat things. You can see some heat coming off of the, the computer screen there. Um, I'm, I'm recording this at night, so it is dark, it's black and white in the normal lens here as well. Um, typically this would be in color, okay? So this lens here, the thermal lens, not verifocal. I can click these buttons. It probably shouldn't even be there. However, not verifocal, it won't move, okay? This lens, this lens is responsible for face detection. Okay, um, so sometimes you need to zoom in in order to see a face. Okay, so I'm not, I, when I say zoom in to see a face, I mean on the initial setup. So sometimes you might just need to uh, zoom it in. You, it's very important. After you're done with your calibration and setup process, you don't want to move, you know, you want to lock these positions and we'll, we'll go over that later. Okay, zooming in and zooming out should not be done after you have this set, because it changes everything, okay? But on your initial setup, you may want to zoom in a little bit. Um, why, why would you might want to zoom in? So you'll notice we, we don't have anybody standing there right now, but if, you have, if I had somebody stand up in, in that area right now, it might be hard to detect a face from far away, okay? So you want to make sure 
um, that it, that the camera is able to pick up a face. Okay, so and you'll know that by your, um, if you were if I were to have somebody standing there right now, at the point that you get a blue detection box around the face is is the point that you're detecting a face. So you may have to zoom it in, and the and the reason why zooming in really doesn't hurt you is because look at this. So this is your thermal lens. This is responsible for giving you a temperature reading. If it's not visible in this in this thermal lens, you're not getting a temperature reading. Okay. So like for instance, let's say this wall wasn't here on the left. Okay. And I had uh, I had people walking through there or something. Um, you know, I'm not getting a temperature reading from anybody walking through there. Why? Because there's it's cut off here in the thermal lens. Okay. So it's very, very important. I mean, if, if it's not necessary to have in the shot, you may not need it in the shot. Um, so you can, it doesn't hurt to, to zoom in to shrink your field of view just a little bit. Um, we've done the testing on this area for what we use it for. We don't really need to zoom in. So we're okay. But in certain situations, you may need, you may find yourself needing to zoom in and that's perfectly fine. Um, but you want to figure all those things out in your setup process. Again, you do not want to move the lens at all once you're done and everything's working properly. It will literally change everything, okay? So that's how you zoom in, zoom out. You can set your settings with an autofocus camera. There's focus buttons here to manually focus it as well, but really not necessary. You shouldn't need those at all because uh, it is autofocus. So once you zoom in or zoom out a little bit, it will automatically focus, okay? So that's the zooming and zooming out functions. The next step, we're gonna to go to our parameter configure. And there's some information here that we're gonna to need to do, okay? So um, the first thing uh, that we'll need to do is you see how there's a detection area and you see how it's taking up the entire screen by default. Your detection area, you need to define it, okay? So this is where your camera is looking for faces, okay? and also where you're going to be getting temperature readings. Um, so it's very important to set your detection area. So the first thing you do is you hit clear. Now I'm not getting temperature readings over here. So why would I include that in the camera? It's not necessary. I'm not getting temperature readings, you know, in, in this office over here, or, you know, with somebody saying that I don't really need that. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for my walkway, my walkway, okay? And as people walk through here, I wanna get temperature readings. Things you might wanna cut out of, of the temperature readings. Um, glass, uh, you know, glass that holds heat. Uh, you want to keep those kind of things out of your detection area if possible. Um, they can they can affect the uh, the readings that you know it could you know if if the the cross were to shoot and it's looking for a forehead and it lands on the glass for a moment, it could give a higher temperature reading. So you really want to keep those like anything that holds heat, holds a high amount of heat. Uh, you want to keep that out of the shot. So what I would do in this situation um, for our setup, so, so the first thing you do is you're going to hit the clear button. You're going to start to set your area. So you click on the screen and it's like connect the dots. Okay. So, and you're going to, and you're going to set your area. Okay. Now it's recommended. We recommend kind of more of a rectangular look. So we're, we're going to shoot for, about this so we get everybody walking through a walkway and remember you're not going to get a detection reading for anybody walking uh behind the calibrator okay so if you're if they're you know starting from behind the calibrator i'm not going to get a reading for them okay so i'm not getting anybody that's you know by standing behind my calibrator anyway i just want to grab everybody that's walking through this walkway um for for our environment okay so um that that being said after you get to your last dot connected, you just right click to detach. Okay, now, now I'm detached. Uh, you wanna make sure that you save it. So you scroll down to the bottom and you hit apply. That finalizes your box and, it, and, it's, and it's now set. Okay, um, once your box is set, um, so now that your box is set, uh, you will go ahead and the very next step, is to make sure that you turn on enable. Now by default, this stuff's gonna be on. So you really don't need to turn on anything. If you want to turn off face detection for any reason, you could turn it off. If you don't detect the face, you're not getting a temperature reading. So really not gonna turn that off. Show the detection area is good for the setup. You could always turn that off. What that looks like is if you don't want them to see this green box, that green box won't show if you have that off. Um, in, in the live view, I mean. 
uh, all these other settings that are in here, you're not going to touch. The one thing that I would recommend lowering is your upload image interval. This can have uh, um, uh, results in uh, your alarm settings, um, as well as you know uploading images to the CMS software. We recommend dropping that down to two or three, uh, depending, but I would definitely drop, recommend dropping it down to at least either two or three. Okay, make sure anytime you make a change, you're gonna go ahead and hit apply. Your temperature units, this is where you could set it. If you were gonna, if you were gonna use Celsius, this is where you could set it. Now keep in mind, if you switch to Celsius or feet, anything that we did prior to this, you would need to adjust those numbers for the new temperatures, okay? Um, Cavity temperature is the temperature that your your camera is. Okay, um, so if your if your camera is um, typically we say if this camera temperature is read, ours is reading ninety six point eleven. So typically if we say if this cat if this camera gets up to about ninety five or higher, you would turn on environment adaption. A lot of times this camera will fluctuate between eighty eight and ninety two um, in most in most locations, but some locations we're a little warmer in New York. Also, it's in an office building right now with no AC on. Um, yeah, you would turn you would turn on environment adaption if this camera temperature was a, a little bit higher. That will just help uh, with giving you accurate temperature readings. If you're in the you know the standard 86 to 92 range, really, or 86 to like even 93 range, really not necessary. 94, 95, and up, you might want to turn on this environment adaption. It's just going to put in a correction coefficient for you. Um, so that way it will give you a, you know, more accurate of a reading. Okay. So for us, we're going to turn that on your face color. This is just going to show you color in the thermal, uh, mapping sec in the thermal mapping section with, um, in the, uh, I'm sorry, in the thermal lens. So, you know, you'll notice like when somebody walks in, you'll see kind of color to the face, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's warm, hot, you know, cold, nobody's gonna have a cold face, but you'll kind of see those heat, those heat detections in the face. So you might want to turn that on as well. A normal temperature display. This is going to show you low temperature readings. Um, so you know before we jump into that, hold on one second. We'll 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 get back to that in one moment here. Um, right down here is your normal temperature range. Okay. So your normal temperature range by default is set at 96.8. Um, the high range is 99.14. We, we have been typically recommending that this be set at 99.8. Um, now, as what, this, what these numbers mean is it's not going to give you a temperature reading below 96.8, um, and it's not going to give you anything above, well, it will give you, so it, it's going to give you green boxes around the face for 96.8 and 99 to anywhere from 96.8 to 99.8, okay? 99.9 .9 and above now becomes your your high temperature threshold. So if you have an alarm set up or something like that, if you have, um, this will also cause a red box to go around the face. 99.9 .9 and above, it's going to, you know, create that red box around the face with the high temperature alert. So it's going to be, you know, whatever is one point higher than this, this number is your high temperature number. Okay. Um, your low temperature number, 96.8, you know, we'd say 96.8, 96.6, you could kind of set it in that range. Anybody that's showing up with lower temperatures uh, than 96.6, hypothermia is starting to settle in. Um, you know, they're, 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 I mean, there's, there's no reason to show any lower temperatures. It's just a misfire or it's trying to detect the face um, as, they're, as they're walking in. That's the same reason we, we recommend leaving this off because you're not gonna get any lower temperatures. Anybody lower than 96.8 probably isn't walking around, you know, if their skin temperature is even lower than that. So there's really no reason uh, to show the low temperatures. It's just gonna show like a misfire or if somebody's, you know, halfway into the field of view and then you're gonna get, you will get screenshots in the CMS with, with abnormal temperatures. It's just not worth it. It's confusing, leave it off. Okay, that's my recommendation. So make sure after you set your number, now you don't need to leave this at 99.8. You know, you can set this at whatever you want, whatever your threshold is. If, uh, the reason we say 99.8 is because not, that means 99.9 .9 and above is your high temperatures. The camera is 0.54, um, has, an, has an accuracy threshold of point within a half a degree, 0.54 to be exact. So if it's off by a half a degree, let's say at 99.9, .9, um, 
that puts you at 100.4, which is what the CDC recommends as a high temperature alert, uh, as a high temperature. Okay, so you know anything 99.9 and above, you might want to have checked. You, you know, if it's off by half a degree for whatever reason, it's definitely worth checking out. Of course, I've had some people set this at 99.5. They want to be extra cautious. I've had people set at 100.1. Uh, you know, it's it's okay. They don't want to alarm people. Um, so, but. That's our recommendation, 99.9 is our recommendation, okay? So after you make those changes, make sure you hit apply. <clears throat> um, your low temperature alarm, okay? This is really not gonna be used. Um, so we're, we're, we'll cover this afterwards, but I will, I will show you this in a second. Normal temperature alarm. So for instance, if you wanted a regular, uh, let's say a green light, okay? We sell a green light with our Siren Kit 54. Um, it comes with a, a red and a green light, okay? So let's say for a normal temperature, if you want to hook up uh, a green light with the dry contacts, the camera has two uh, alarm outputs, okay? It's got alarm output one and alarm output two, okay? Let's say you want to hook up um, a green light so that when somebody walks through, uh, not only do they see the green box around the face from the, from the camera's output, maybe they don't have, you don't have a screen there, you want to let them know that they're okay to walk through, and you, you, you purchase that green light. So you connect your, um, let's say we connect it to alarm output one, okay? So you'll run your cables to alarm output one. Um, uh, you'll check this box to activate your channel, okay? If you want to send a uh, SMTP email for every normal temperature that you get, you could do that. So this is gonna be every normal temperature, okay? So typically a lot of what I've seen is most people are using this for Strictly that green light. So if you're, you're hooking up that green light, um, go ahead and enable it. Make sure you enable it. You're going to go ahead and check the box for output channel. Make sure you set a schedule. Okay. By default, no schedule set. So if you want to set it for every day, you just hit this little icon. It's going to set it for every day, this icon at the top. So it's, a, it's active at all times. If you only want it active for certain days of the week and whatnot, you can do that as well here. Okay, so you can set a schedule. Um, alarm record. Um, this is this. Um, this is actually not not utilized at this time. It's maybe for a later firmware upgrade. Um, if you want to again send an email, SMTP, you can enable that. Your FTP upload, you can enable that. If you have a file transfer protocol uh, server, you can use that to upload. Um, so again, most people are not using this for normal temperatures. Okay. Make sure once you activate it, you turn it on, uh, you hit apply, okay? Now, let's, let's say you hooked up a, a, red, a red light, okay, with our dry contact alarm. You would hook it up, let's say, to alarm output two. You check the box for alarm output two, you enable it. Um, again, you're going to set a schedule, same kind of thing. For this one, you might want to get it, you might want to get an email, okay? So every time a high temperature comes in, you'll get an email with a screenshot of that person's temperature. Okay, this is how you set that up. All right, so that's just a quick run through of the alarm output. All right, our very next step that we'll be doing, if you're not using alarm outputs, you can skip this part. You're, you're not, you're not going to need this. Um, our next very important part, thermal mapping. Okay, so this is our last part. This is super, super important. We need, this needs to be done. Um, if this doesn't get done, you're, you're going to notice a lot of issues um with grabbing faces grabbing temperatures accurately okay um this can be a little confusing uh and i'm sure you can see that from that pamphlet that you got um it's, it's hard to express verbally so seeing it is really the best way to do it um the way you do this so there's going to be three points okay uh so you're always going to be on ID one as really I, the IDs are, if you want to set multiple detection boxes, not really going to be used. Maybe if you have like a lane, like four lanes, you can do that. It is a, most people is not going to pertain to you. Call, you, know, you can call our tech support hotline. We'll, um, you know, if, if something like that needs to be done, we'll let you know that. So most, so most times you're going to leave this at ID one, your seam depth that always stays at 12 feet, unless you're using meters, you would switch this to five. Okay. This does not change, okay? So this is what we're really talking about here is mapping points. So there's three points, point one, point two, point three. Okay, we're gonna start with point one. 
it's a green marker. You click on the screen. See how the green marker pops up? Nothing pops up over here, okay? The point of this is to take up at least 70% of the field of view of your detection area, okay? So um, my box is here, okay, in the, in the detection area. I can see it. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to match the point. So if I put, I put that point there, right? What I'm now trying to do is mark it in my thermal lens, the same exact spot, okay? Wherever it is on the thermal lens, you're trying to mark it. I'm sorry, wherever it is in the standard lens, you're trying to mark it in the thermal lens, okay? Typically, I always say this is a two-man job, and I'm gonna show you why in a moment. I don't have a second person with me here to kind of show you, but there are little things that can help if you have a second person once you kind of uh, get this close, okay? So you're going to mark it, then you mark it over here. Now, don't hit apply yet. Now go to point two. Point two is gonna go in the top right of your detection box, okay? So you mark it as close as you can in your detection box, and then you're gonna to try to match it on your thermal lens. As you can see here, it's a little cut off for us. I'm gonna show you how to change all this in, in a little bit if we need to. Um, so you're gonna try your best to, to match the point. Okay, point three, we're gonna set this and it's gonna create kind of like a triangle. Okay, this one's going in the middle. Okay, the middle bottom of your detection box. Okay, uh, and then I'm gonna try to mark that spot on my mapping point here. And you're gonna kind of create like a triangle type looking uh, thing here. Now watch what's gonna happen when I hit apply. Once you put your third point down, you need to hit apply. Watch what happens when I hit apply. See this? See how the detection box on the left here moved? What this is telling me is that my, my points are off somewhat. Because um, if my points were perfectly on, right, uh, perfectly matched, this green detection box would be right over the calibrator, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this a little closer. So I'm gonna go to point two, move this in a little bit. I believe that'll move it, no, nope, moves it the opposite way. What I need to do is I'm gonna to need to move my, because remember this lens is further out than this lens, okay? This lens by default and it's fixed lens is more zoomed in. It's got a tighter tighter field of view. So I'm gonna move this in, inwards a little, I'm sorry, inwards a little bit. I think more than anything we're really looking at probably in this situation, my green point. See how much it moves on my green point now? I think I'm more over here. Now, again, this is just a reference point, okay? Um, let me move this down a little bit. Yep, let me make it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, so typically what I do is I get this as close as I can with my eye, okay? Which is kind of what I've done now. I've gotten this pretty pretty dang close. So now what I would do is I would, if typically if I'm doing a setup, I would now have a second person, okay? While you're on the computer, you're on the computer, I'd have a person walk into the field of view, stand stagnant, have them stand there. And what I do is I position them. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position them over the red marker, okay? And the goal here is, as he's standing under the red marker, right, and you wanna make sure his face is in the detection box, the goal here is to make sure you're gonna notice a green box around his face, okay? You're gonna notice a green box around his face with a temperature reading. The goal is you want that green box that's around his face to be square around his face, okay? You don't want it off you know, too high. You don't want it off too low where it's like landing on his nose. You're gonna see a cross in that box you're gonna see, um, you want that cross to essentially be falling on the forehead area, okay? So that's what you do is, you, and you're just gonna make little tweaks to the red one, okay? You're just gonna move the red one either left, right. Typically what I do is I move this marker, the red marker, I move it in the thermal lens, I'll move this up and down to move the box up and down. And this one, if I need to move it um, left or right on its face, um, then I'll move this left or right. Now I'm just tweaking the red one because I'm having him stand underneath the red one. Next thing I do is I have him stand, take a step over to his right, stand stagnant, uh, like right over here. So if this was us, 
probably like, you know, right, o right over here. So he's in the field of view, his head's got to be in the field of view so you can get a temperature reading. And I'm just going to tweak this blue one either left or right. The blue one you really don't need to do as much. Um, you really want to get this one, you know, matched up very close over here. And then what I do is I have him take another step over to the right. Green one's super important. You want to make sure the green one, same thing as he's standing underneath the green area. You're going to tweak your green markers just a little bit left, right, up, down, um, just so you get that box square around his face. That's really all it's about. Um, this, this box here, this green box, yes, typically you want it centered around the, the calibrator. Um, typically you want it centered around the calibrator. Uh, you know, sometimes it may, be, it may be just off just a little bit to the left or to the right. And um, the reason it would be off to the left or to the right a little bit is maybe your camera's mounted to the left. See how mine's cut to the left just a little bit? Still in the box, but maybe it's over to the right a little bit. You know, it's just where the camera's mounted, okay? So typically that green box is going to be around the calibrator, okay? If, if it's not around the calibrator, something's probably wrong, okay? So, um, and, and keep in mind too, if you're zoomed in and the caliber is not in the field of view of this lens, that's okay. The caliber just needs to be seen by this lens. It can just make your setup process a little bit more difficult because you don't have this guide. Um, so that being said, um, that is that is really the setup process. You re and then usually what I do is after I do the green marker, I just make sure I have not step over to the left, make sure the green box is still around the space, step over to the left again underneath the red, make sure the green box is still around the space square. Sometimes you might have to do it a couple times just to get it um, uh, perfect in all three quadrants uh, because, you know, when you make a tweak on one, it can affect the other. Okay. So really, you know, you want to just get it into that sweet spot. You want it square around the face. And what that's guaranteeing is no matter when somebody walks into the field of view, you're going to get a temperature reading. It literally works so well. It's really incredible technology. It's awesome. So um, you want to make sure that this, uh, these points are properly set. Okay. That is the setup process of the camera, the ambient temperature. You're not going to adjust these settings. Bad point check. This is really just more of a tech support thing. You're not going to need that. Measure, ver verify. You're not going to turn that on. If you turn this on, this is an, again another tech support tool. Um, if you turn this on, then you are going to uh, send me, um, uh, turn off the face detection. So make sure that's not on uh, a couple of, actually one other thing I didn't cover. Let's go. If we go to our live video feed. Okay. So from here, uh, after you go to your live video feed, after you finish your setup process, you may want to switch this. So if you go to here at the bottom where it says channel two, okay. Channel two is your thermal lens. Okay. What I see a lot of people like to use is uh, so this is called, you know, our white hot cy cyto color. Um, that's uh, your heat signatures are showing in white. Okay. What I see a lot of people like to use is the rainbow version of this. So it's kind of, so you can see all the heat signatures and such. I'm going to show you how to change that really quick. So now that's that channel two, um, you're going to hit this gear icon at the bottom. So after you turn that on, you're going to switch it from standard mode to debug mode. So you can change these settings and you're going to go to set cyto color. You just switch it from white hot. You can switch it to rainbow. There's a bunch of options in there for you, but you can switch it to whatever you'd like. And you'll see it'll switch. You can also turn off the temperature strip over here by hitting, you know, it's by default it's on. You can switch it to close. Once you, once you close it, you can go ahead and hit save. Okay. Um, that can also be handy. You may want to turn off that temperature switch for while you're doing the setup process, just because it can get in the way sometimes. As you saw, it kind of got in the way of ours. Um, I couldn't see the wall over here, so you may want to turn that off. Um, and then you'll just hit save. And then when you close, it's going to ask you to switch it back to standard mode. You can hit yes, that way nobody messes with your settings. Um, I will say one more, one last thing. Go to configuration, temperature measurement, thermal mapping. From here, make sure you lock your focus point. That way nobody can zoom in or zoom out with anything. Again, if you zoom in, zoom out, you move, you know, you unfocus the lens or something, it changes things. So things are going to have to be re, you know, recalibrated again, 
you know, go essentially through the setup process again to make sure everything is set up properly. Okay. So that is our setup process of the camera. I'm sorry, one last, one last thing, I promise, the last thing. Um, if, you, uh, if you are setting up the alarm, one thing to remember too is your alarm output. This also, you can name it so that way you don't get confused. So like in our situation, I would name this green light. And then I can set how many milliseconds I want the alarm to go off for, okay? So this is milliseconds, okay? So if I want the green light to go on for five seconds, let's say I can set it at 5,000, 5,000, five seconds. And then I can switch it to output two. I can label this red light. Okay. And same thing, alarm time continuous uh, by default, it's milliseconds, so 5,000. If you leave it on continuous, you literally need to log into the camera and click stop to get it to stop. Okay. So very highly recommended setting a time. All right, so I promise that's it. That is our setup process. That's the basic run through of the setup of the uh, SEC body temp cam one. And I thank you for your time.